Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about doing an autopsy on this Honda Outboard and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. This video is technically part two of converting an outboard to kill cooling. This is the outboard we were going to use, but looks like it's lock solid. Uh, there was even things like sand under the cowling, which is a pretty big clue to the fact that it's really had a dunking. You don't generally get sand in the cowling of an outboard unless it's been right to the bottom. You know, not impossible, but it's a bit of a clue. The starter motor is seized too, so that's another bit of a clue that something more than just an internal engine failure is happening here. Let's pull it apart, see what we see, but I'm thinking if it's not recoverable, we're going to use the little uh, Tahatsu four-stroke off Red Dwarf. This outboard also had a dunking last week. It was actually on the inflatable, flipped upside down due to getting a rope caught. Uh, didn't notice for a while, but have given it a flush. It's not seized, so I think it'll be fine. All right, let's grab a rattle gun and just start pulling this apart and have a look what's inside. Okay, here I've got some impact sockets that I've painted silver so they look like normal sockets. Let's have a look what's under this cover. Hmm, it does go all the way into the crankcase, that's interesting. Here we can see in the crankcase a little bit of rust, not atrocious, but a bit. Let's look under the rocker cover. Put that under close-up cam. Bit of water, bit of stuff in there. Yeah, you can see the bores are a bit similar. So really would need a rebuild. Not impossible. I don't think it's too far gone, but it's definitely a full rebuild and a new starter motor and new this, new that. Which is not what this project's about. What we're gonna do now is take the power head off the little tatsu have a look at the cooling system there and the exhaust system. I'm going to do this pretty quickly because I think what we learnt last week will serve us well this week, i.e. we don't really need to understand where every passage goes, we just need to understand water that comes into the engine and water that comes out, whether it comes out all the time or whether it only comes out when the thermostat's open. So let's look at that. I think fuel tank off first. This fuel tank's going to probably have water in it, so we need to clean it out anyway. I'm going to take this pull start mechanism off too, just want to try and get a bit of stuff out of the way. It's also a good chance to actually give this a really good clean up after it's dunking as well. I think lucky last now is we're just going to take the throttle mechanism off. Two cables, push pull cables, do this. We're just going to back these off, we can pop it out, we can get the little lugs out here. Put that out of the way and then start undoing the power head. Underneath, nothing too exciting, just bolts up into the power head or quickly undo those and then we'll lift it off. And then we'll see how similar it is to that little mercury. Here we go, one power head. What do we got attached still? Uh, oil pressure sensor, I think. Well, I'm kind of glad this is coming apart because it's not looking super healthy. Good chance to give it a bit of TLC. Definitely looking a little worse for wear. All right, let's see what we can save and what we need to replace here. I'm thinking maybe oil pump under here. Let's have a look. This one came out, this one sheared. My bad. Remind me to go get that heat. Good afternoon. Had a few little troubles with uh, recording gear computers once again. So I didn't uh, get to film taking the rest of the Tatsu apart, but it is apart now. So I'll show you where we're at. Starting right from the beginning, this is the pipe up from the water pump. Comes in here, fills this section here. This section here is here. So the grubbier section, you can see the mud inside there. And then it comes up under here 
which we got labelled as in. This cover goes on here, but the in gets passed straight through up here to the in on the cylinder head. So the cylinder head sits that way. Once it comes in, and come across to this side too. Then it fills all the water jackets into the block as well. On the top here, we have the thermostat that connects to the water jackets here. It's not until the thermostat opens that it comes down here. It just goes down this hole all the way through here and straight out the outlet, nothing in between. And then down the out here and comes into this side and comes underneath. From there, comes down here, comes around and sort of gets sprayed in this bit of a swirl by the looks of it around the exhaust. And that's pretty much the full flow. So not too complicated this outboard. I probably would rather have done this job on a bigger outboard. It's only a uh, six horsepower, but I think it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We'll see how it goes. Obviously not a lot of horsepower means not a lot of heat to get rid of. So we got that sort of in our favor with a small outboard. I can see myself doing it on something a bit larger down the track though. Adrian's got a 40 Honda, the same as I used to have on the green machine. We need to restore that anyway, so maybe that's another good outboard to do this project on. There are now four main modifications I'm going to make to the engine itself so that we can send the water off to be cooled. That's obviously a whole other part of the project, but I'll show you now what we're going to do to the block itself. The junction point here where we have water in, water out and exhaust out has a cover plate here, which is actually really fortunate for us. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is simply make a replacement block, leave the exhaust going out, but completely block off the water here and here. That way that raw water doesn't make it up past this point at all. Pretty simple mod. Because the cylinder head mounts to here and then bolts to the block, it's really important that this plate stays exactly that thickness. So let's measure that. And I've really got to think about whether I want to TIG something up here or just get one of these laser cut without these two holes in it. My worry with TIGging it up is that we might warp it a bit. This obviously needs to be dead flat to seal. So I think laser cutting is going to be the way to go. It's probably worth noting that all that really matters is the location of the bolt holes and the exhaust hole. So in some ways I can get a piece of aluminium this thick relatively crudely cut the outside but very accurately drill everything and it's kind of going to be okay so maybe we'll just do that all right let's measure the thickness three point nine nine millimeters so four millimeters thick i just put a new battery in these calipers too and it's probably worth noting these take a cr 2032 these are 20 millimeters across and 3.2 millimeters thick, which is where the CR2032 comes from. In part one, uh, a lot of people comment about cooling the exhaust. My real plan, which I would love to have done, which is much easier with a bigger outboard, is to actually take the exhaust and do a dry exhaust up instead of going down the leg. What I am going to do with the exhaust on this outboard though is relatively straightforward, so I'll show you that. This is where the water comes in then it normally goes up into that hole it's in the midsection we saw, then eventually it comes out here and sprays around here. All I'm going to do is get the Dremel, cut this bridge between these two sections, then come up, come down here, cool the exhaust, job done. I'm going to start with a little cutting disc, see how we go. Bit of an experiment. This is done up very tight, might put it in the vise. I think this will get us a fair bit of the way there. I think we got pretty much all of it out with the uh, cutting disc. Might clean it up with the grinder, but Definitely the bulk of it's out now. Okay, let's swap it over to the little die grinder. Just looks like that. So far, so good. Now we have the raw water cooling the exhaust directly. And because we're blocking off the other holes, it'll come up to the bottom of here, just get pressure, 
go back, go out the exhaust, that's all it can do. What we need to do now is pick the point where we're going to inject the coolant to go in and out. Pretty obvious which side's in and out, same as it used to be, but I'll show you where I'm thinking. Here on the cylinder head, this was the inside, so this is where the water came in, went into the water jackets. So I'm thinking we can drill and tap and put a tail here. This is the outside, so we'll drill and tap and put a tail here. I'm a little bit concerned about the size of the hose tails I'm going to better fit in that space. Uh, the outlet to the pump is relatively small, as we talked about last week, but at the same time, that outlet is pumping 20 degree water, not 80 degree water that you would tend to have circulating in a cooling system. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. It really depends what temperature our heat exchanger gets that water down to, uh, the volume we, we can pump, that kind of stuff. So. I think we'll see. We can always try and go bigger, try and up the flow rate. It's an experiment, you know. The other advantage to a closed cooling system is instead of just having an overheat alarm, we can actually have a gauge showing us the temperature of the coolant. So we've got a lot of ability to monitor what's going on. I've also seen some pumps online, some electric water pumps that take a temperature sensor and regulate their speed based on the temperature of the coolant. We talked last week or last video about uh, maybe linking it to RPM the way that the impeller is in the outboard leg. But I kind of like the idea of it being informed more by temperature than RPM. So that's kind of something pretty cool to do down the track as well when we get to that part of the project. So. What we need to do now is make a base plate to block it off uh, and drill and tap. Now, Adrian's working on my moot this afternoon and he's gonna pop over afterwards and he bought a couple of hose tails on the way here. So we'll probably do that together this evening. Uh, but it's gonna take a bit of time to make one of these. Uh, what else can we do? Ah, I think I said four things. I think I was thinking uh, cut the channel, block off the plate, install the tails and then block off the telltale. But the telltale is actually below on the raw water side. So that's kind of cool because it means you still have a telltale for the impeller. You know that your exhaust's not getting cooled if that telltale stops flowing. So that still serves its purpose there. But what I think we do need is a way to have a small amount of coolant go through the circuit before the thermostat opens. You know, we don't want the water just to you know, have nowhere to go, have an airlock, that kind of stuff. So let's have a think about that now. Having a think about it's not helping. I'm actually slightly baffled as to um, how this doesn't get an airlock anyway, because the coolant comes up and then hits against the thermostat. The only outlet that kept a bit of water circulating before was the telltale, which we don't have anymore. I'm almost feeling, and I might discuss this with Adrian when he gets here, that if we drill a bit of a pinhole between the bottom of the thermostat and the outlet, I think that'll do it. Yeah, I can't see why we can't just drill a small hole through here to the outlet so that coolant will flow up, go through the outlet. When it gets hot, the thermostat opens and a large amount flows. Should be able to push air out, the air will rise. It's quite a high point in the cooling system. So I'm gonna run that by the boss when he gets here. In the meantime, though, just for fun. I'm going to look through my aluminium scrap, see if I got anything four mil thick, but these are some of the bits off it. Let's give these a clean up and a spray. It's always satisfying. Uh, I don't know if I showed you, one of the uh, time consuming disasters I had was three broken bolts. I even put this in the drill press and I still made an absolute mess of it. Don't blame the Coopers. But the reason I'm not so worried about this is all the head bolts are fine. This is actually just the rocker cover bolts. So what I did was I actually drilled all the way through and I'm just gonna put longer bolts with the nut on it. I think that's a point sort of worth laboring a little bit in that it was a technique, actually an engineer on the island uh, sort of told me, it's one of those things sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. I was wrestling actually in the bottom of this Hobie thing that I've got to restore soon. That's a whole project I've got to do. Um, it had some fittings that go in for the pedals and they had stripped or bolted broken or something. And I was sort of telling my woes, so what's underneath? I said, oh, nothing. He said, go all the way through, put a long bolt, a washer and a nut, done. Don't worry about, you know, oversized drilling, tapping, you know, time cert, whatever, just 
put a bolt through. And in that case, I could. On the other side though, here I couldn't, so I put a little time cert in. So we've got a time cert in here, so we've got the same thread, these two longer bolts are gonna go. It's nothing critical. I may TIG up this one, that's a bit of a mess. All right, in the meantime though, let's clean up the rusty rocker cover and the cover for the oil pump. I'm not gonna to touch this side because uh, this is the side the oil pump runs on and I want that to be really smooth. You can see here, this bit's pretty corroded. I'm actually surprised it is this bad. The outboard's only, uh, what is it? Well, it's when I was doing Renko, so three years old, something like that. Uh, yes, it's lived on the river the whole time, but other than last week, it had never sunk or anything. And uh, it's not from that, too recent. So, don't know, I'm thinking maybe we had a raw water leak, uh, possibly base gasket, something like that, because this was underneath, uh, coming up the drive shaft. I don't know, I think it's worth looking at when we put this back together to stop it happening again. The shape of this rocker cover I couldn't get into with the bench grinder, so I'm gonna have a go with a little wheel on the Dremel as well. The perfect tool for this job really is the little sandblasting booth. Uh, Adrian's got one in his workshop. I think he's even got one I can have, so next time. For now though, I think we'll just push on. funny I saw on YouTube the other day they were saying how uh, a lot of these restoration videos are fake they're kind of new things that are just dunked in salt water made to rust and then you fix it up and I was just thinking imagine not having enough stuff that's really rusty to fix that you actually have to make something rusty makes me envious I think they're as clean as I'm going to get them with wire wheels etc rust guards a pretty good primer rather than putting paint straight on that so let's find a little paintbrush still quite a bit of rust in there but Let's see how it goes. Paint it black and put it back. Now I'm gonna go see if I've got any aluminium scraps that are four mil thick. No, I don't. All right, that's okay. Um, it's actually quite cool. Often you can jump on eBay or something and order, you know, really small bits of aluminium just come in the post, which is convenient when you live on an island with no shops. <laughs> I was saying how, you know, I liked the idea of putting the exhaust up through the cowling. Usually there's an exhaust cover, you could block that off and just go exhaust up. It'd be kind of fun, bit of a hot rod mod, you know, um, not massively practical, but it would get rid of the need for the raw water pump entirely. I'm not sure that anything particularly bad would happen if this didn't have water going through the exhaust, but better safe than sorry. The approach we take to cooling the coolant is still a little bit up for debate. I'm tempted to go the motorcycle radiator because I've actually got a, uh, a little motorcycle, a little 125 that's water-cooled that Adrian and I are gonna be wrecking and using for sort of some fun projects, hopefully, if time permits. Uh, so there's a radio straight up we could use. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is have essentially keel cooling, but inside the tinny. So take, say, the little aluminium punt I've got, put some angle line into the corners of the boat. So two of the sides are against the water, uh, then have some channel up the center from what I've been reading, the best way to go is to have multiple short tubes because as the water cools, the temperature differential between the coolant and the, you know, the seawater, the river water, becomes less. What this means is that a single four metre run doesn't do anywhere near as much extraction of heat as four one metre runs because all four runs get, you know, the temperature quite hot. So you're talking, you know, 80, 90 degree coolant going into 20 degree water, so it all drops off relatively quickly. You exchange quite a lot of heat, then you gather at a manifold and you go off. That's why heat exchangers you see on a boat are lots of little tubes. It's exactly why it does it that way. I also like this idea of having it inside the hull because it's an aluminium hull. Aluminium conducts heat very well, and you're not adding any drag if you had uh, pipes on the outside. Few people suggested uh, having like a coil or like a heat exchanger with the multiple tubes inside the leg. I think maybe you could do that on a bigger outboard. An outboard like this, however, you know, by the time you've got a drive shaft and linkages and stuff, there's just almost no room. It's quite a tiny leg, so I don't think it's possible, but bigger outboards have got plenty of room. So, you know, maybe that's a go down the track. 
The other thing I want to think about is that at the moment water comes up to here and it stops. It comes across here, which means it can actually flow up and flow up into here. Uh, I could drill a second hole here, like a telltale here, just to make sure air doesn't get trapped and this section behind the exhaust isn't dry. This little telltale here, as far as I can see, only connects to the inlet. Yeah. But I've got to say, I feel like there's half a chance we could actually drill down into it. Hmm, that's tempting. Because you look across here, see it's got a little plug there, telltale. Hmm. Would that allow water to come up and then flood into here? Should we do that? What's the worst that can happen? Good news is they do connect. Bad news is I drilled all the way through. So I'm just gonna put a grub screw in, maybe tick it up, tap it, put a grub screw to know. But hopefully you can see there that starts to flow out here now. So this side and this side are connected now. So cooling water can come up, down through here, out the telltale, into the exhaust side. So this whole exhaust manifold will be cooled. Just need to tap and put a little plug in there, I think, probably easier than welding it. So that was actually my last sort of worry, to be honest with you, that that section would remain dry. I think if we drill a similar hole right up near the thermostat, we'll get a little bit of flow of coolant the whole time. This will mean we get a flow of raw water through the whole exhaust the whole time. I think that means we're in pretty good shape to get this happening. These other parts, we did the rust converter are pretty dry now. Just gonna brush the excess off. We'll give them a bit of a spray. So Adrian bought the bits we needed and uh, where yeah. are they? Yeah, yeah, they're in my ute, yeah. Nice, good. <laughs> yeah. I do apologise. That's all right. Um, we'll I'll just... make up for it at lunchtime tomorrow. Yeah, cool. We were just talking about this um, thermostat. Like, it doesn't seem to have any built-in okay. bypass mechanism at all. So it comes in, yeah. and it can go up both sides of the water jackets. That's nigh. Uh, nigh. nigh. Yeah, 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 nigh. The nights you see me. It goes in there. Well. It goes in there, up there, and over here. These, yeah. Around there. To the bottom of the thermostat. To the bottom of the thermostat. So there is actually... No short. There's no short circuit at all, though, I can see. No, so well, what's here? What? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, because like, there's a divider there. So there's like yeah. a divider, like, is that little port that lets it. But it goes into this side, though. I'll show you. Hang on, I'll get the. It goes on that way. Yeah. Why is that? So that's in oh, yeah. and out. Oh, that's why. You said not see that. There's a butterfly in there. There is not. <laughs> there isn't. No, there isn't. Good. Well, I just made the sound. But that doesn't look like it's let water past it. Like you can, everything else looks like it's had water around it. Yeah. But why does that not look? Yeah. I guess it only gets there, it's stagnant on that side, but it's always flowing on the other side. Mm. And then it's passed back across that tube. Straight down. Yeah. Straight down and, and then out. So when it's open the thermostat, it goes out the exhaust, or it just goes... Well, you kind of, it goes out here. This is the exhaust, yep. it goes out here, then it comes in here, and then it actually gets thrown around, like in a bit of a spray around the exhaust. It's kind of funky, isn't it? Yeah. So what I did so is maybe I actually that cut that metal out. To give it some... Well, now the pump just cools the exhaust. Yes, yes, good idea. But because the leg could get quite hot. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but the funny thing is, when I thought about it, I don't necessarily need to do that because I drilled this hole in here, which means that water will come up, then go under here. It yep. used to be blocked. That's the telltale. Yep. But now it can actually come out and then out that way afterwards. So this is a short circuit. I want this to fill with water too. But you want to fill that with coolant too? No, I don't think I'll put coolant in there. I'll put coolant. So what I'm going to do is make a plate like that that's blocked off. Mm -hmm. So below the pipe is all salt water, yep. and above the plate is all okay. coolant. So I guess so bigger thermostats will generally have a bleed hole yes. somewhere in here, and this is just completely sealed. It doesn't can, seem. Can the rubber boot come off? I presume it does. I can see the little. There it is there. So I mean, you've got to think. Put it's your got hand some... in front of it so it doesn't 
Yeah. Put your catch it. Oh, where did that go? Well done, you got it. Yeah. But if we can, if we know that we can modify or do something to this. The only thing I'm thinking though is if you have to modify the thermostat every time you change it, you have to modify it. That's stupid. Yeah. Whereas if we modify the block, then That's we're right. done. So okay. do we just drill like a two mil hole? So a really small. But I was actually also hole. looking to see if there was anything that even let the water pass, but there's not. Maybe a bit of air can come past the shaft. But or? it's obviously tried. Mm. Like it's obviously the seal works very well, but as you can see, mm. it's been pushing water really hard around it. Mm. So yeah, we're not seeing any way here to uh, for air to get past. It's weird. It's a really good seal. So we're thinking, drill the hole. Yep. Drill a hole. I think like an eighth hole. Yeah, just a tiny little one through here. Probably, yeah, nothing. Where's that screw? Just right, below right. the seal. But I think that's probably a little bit big. That that hole. Yeah, but just just a pinhole so air can go. Yep. We'll put the bleed in the top too, but just so a little bit of coolant can short circuit. So, just to keep it circulating. So we'll be drawing water from the bottom of the heat exchanger. Yeah. And it'll come up through the water pump up to here, and it'll be wanting to go through the block, which it does. But then it wants to go past the core with cooling. Yeah. But it can't because the thermostat's not open yet. Yeah. But once the thermostat opens, it'll go past its core. So we yeah. don't need another thermostat. No, but even the little the little one mil hole of water that's getting well, past. Well, just give it enough just to take the edge yeah, off. Yeah, but the, that'll still go through the... There's no circulate through the block and then send it off to no, the... No, it'll always take its yeah. entire route through. So the, the thermostat in the car, though, is actually like a diverter. It's not... This is just an on-off valve. This is... Yes. Whereas a car one is like, go this way or go this that way. That way, yes. Yeah. Like, when... When my mook was overheating, mm -hmm. the thermostat, just use this yeah. one as an example, but at the when the thermostat opens, yep. it shuts off. It has a little plate on this end, yep. and it shuts off a hole, which is the bypass, yep. and then the rest of the water then can flow properly. But what was happening, it had the wrong thermostat, wasn't shutting the bypass, yep. so the water was always constantly short-circuiting and never. never heating the thermostat yep. properly. Hence, then the engine would start to overheat. And never went through your heat exchanger? Never, no, it never went, just went, kept yeah. going round and round in the block. So is that just the wrong type of thermostat yes. or failed? Yeah, yeah wrong, wrong type. Wrong type. Is that working? Very I well. think so. Yeah, I think it'll work. All right, very good. Hell yeah, Chuck. Hang on. We're going to say goodbye now. Well, thanks for watching. Sorry this vid was so late. Uh, as I said, lots of problems on the way, but I won't bore you with that. But at least I think we've got a really solid plan now. I still haven't got those host house from Adrian, but I'll get them soon. The little TIG welder I ordered finally turned up, under 500 bucks, so pretty cheap. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to be using that to weld up the hole where I drilled through too far. Uh, have a go at welding the plate, see how flat it stays. And then uh, we'll get into the drilling, tapping, plumbing, all that kind of stuff. All right, take care. I'll catch you then. See ya. New greens today. Good to see. <laughs> Eat it, don't throw it away, Daisy. Good to have a bit of greens, good vitamins. Mm -hmm. Boy, Daffy, share. Don't be a cow. I'll take them off you and give them to Daisy. Here you go, Daisy, have that one. You pay no attention to the pecking order. Sort it out amongst yourselves.